I haven't given a talk for a for a for a year over a year now. So I have I have got to do it. <laughs> so I'm really thankful for this opportunity. And of course, we share many many common interests. Although I will not be talking so much about complex networks in this in this talk, mostly focusing on on this aging, which I will define. Also, try to keep the talk. Um, simple okay in the sense that there are, will be not many mathematical details and more yeah. components and results really than really, really details uh, but i did I, when i was preparing the talk i was i really I, there were many different results that i wanted to present so uh, um and i found there is a you know you find afterwards maybe after 10 years that what you did 10 years ago really is connected to what you have done today <laughs> although you didn't know really but when you think about it <laughs> it is connected so there were some results that i did some previous results, which I really would like to, to share with you, okay? So let me share the screen and it's okay, right? Okay, perfect. Yeah, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is this is the topic. I'm forced, I would like to, of course, my, acknowledge my collaborator, collaborators before I run out of time. Uh, these are Antonio Fernandez Peralta, which you also know is, is from the, is the latest uh, PhD student, then Oriol Artime, Naji Galil, who now is in Madrid, Javier Ramasco, Maxi San Miguel, which are both professors here at TIFIS with me, and now Luis Fernando La Fuerza, who is the, the, the clever one who ended up in the, in, the bank, in the Bank of Spain working, okay? So he's the one that really applying, not just doing theory, but also applying what he developed during the thesis in, the, in more practical business. So um, let me start with the introduction. Uh, the introduction is that we have this Markovian hypothesis, which, you know, roughly speaking, means that future actions only depend on the current state. Okay, so past history is not relevant to what will happen later on. This is the roughly speaking the Markovian hypothesis. And let me give you that it is susceptible, infected, susceptible model. When you have a people have been too can be in two different states, which are in, which are called infected and susceptible, of course, which are obvious meanings in the case of a, of a disease. You have N individuals, which out of them, little N are infected. Uh, they are interacting in some way. And then there are encounters by which an infected individual can give the susceptible one, can, give, can pass the illness. So with some great beta, uh, susceptible can become infected. Of course, infected people can also recover and become susceptible again. So these processes are random processes. So they're initiated randomly with some rate beta and gamma. Once they're initiated, they are completed immediately. So you might not encounter, you, you might not have an encounter of infected or susceptible. But once the encounter occurs and the, and the, and the transmission uh, occurs, this occurs immediately, okay? And also, once you have a recovery rate, once you initiate the recovery rate, you recover immediately. It is the, the assumption that we, I will relax in a moment. And when you, th you think about the in terms of the number of infected people, which is, can you see my arrow? I'm using my arrow to point. Yes, we see. Uh, yeah, we do. Okay. Yeah. You can, you can, you can um, we talk about the number of infected people. Here we have two processes. The number of infected people can increase by one with some rate beta and can decrease by one with some rate gamma. And then you have what is called a master equation, which is an equation for the probability that time t you observe any individuals which are infected. In the usual all to all, uh, I, I will talk about this master equation a little bit later, uh, not important now. I think is that you have some rates, which for instance, in the case of, of an all to all, means that the probability that you get infected is proportional to the number of encounters you can have between infected and non-infected people. And of course, uh, the recovery rate is uh, independent of of other interactions, so it's simply proportional to the number of infected people. Okay, of course, this Markovian is wrong. <laughs> I mean, this is clear, right? Obviously, the rate of recovery is not constant. It depends, I mean, no one recovers from an illness at the very first moment they get it, okay? So it depends on how long you have been in the infected state. This is clear. If we use otherwise this Markovian hypothesis, in which in this context means that the recovery rate does not depend on the time spent in the infected state. So you have always a constant recovery rate. The PDF of the recovery time, the predicted distribution of the recovery time is an exponential. So this is the exponential that we use. Okay. And of course, this exponential means that you have a, a higher probability of, of recovering at the beginning than at the end. It decreases with time. This is not, it's not 
real, of course. And people know it, and people have been using other distributions, which look a little bit closer to what you think should be. I mean, what you expect is that you have your recover uh, around some typical time. For instance, you have a flu, you know, will recover around seven weeks, uh, seven days. Okay, so this one will be seven days. And uh, this might have a distribution which is wider or, or, or narrower or whatever. And uh, you have different formulas which are good for analytical, for analytical expressions, we can have a variable, a log normal, a gamma. And uh, you can also use a fixed delay that everybody uh, recovers at a time tau zero after they have been infected. Okay. So this is something that we want to, to incorporate in, in the model to see which are the consequences of using instead of this exponential distribution for the recovery times using some other of these distributions. Um, let me give you a short introduction of, of simple, uh, no, sorry, not yet. So the, I, I, I like to mention there are two alternative ways of looking at these non-Markovian problems. Okay, these are for me are two different points of view. Um, let's look first at the process and you have what they call delayed degradation. You know, this word degradation, death, infection, depending on the context, okay? So we call degradation or death when the, when the X goes to the other state. It could be susceptible, infected, infected goes to susceptible or, or a, a protein decaying or a people dying effectively, whatever. So called that degradation or something like of the type X disappears, okay? And then you have two points of view. It, the first one is that when you are created, the particle is created, at the very moment the particle is created, it is a sign, a time at which it will die. Kind of a scary, right? So at the moment you're born, okay, you will die in such a time. But this time is got, is obtained from a probability distribution. It's not fixed. So you have a spread of times at which you will die. But this time is stamped to you from the very beginning. So you are born, and of course, in the simulations, we give a, a number to the time this particle will disappear from the system. And then, of course, you can have the probability that you remain in the system, which is this cumulative distribution, which is big F, which is the probability that you are still alive at time t, which is the integral between zero and t of this, <coughs> of this PDF. Uh, it is a normal Markovian process because the time will, you will die depending on how long you have been there. So the time remaining depends on how long you have been in the, in the, in the system. Okay? But there is an equivalent way of looking at that is that you can have a degradation at a rate that depends on how long you have been in the, in the alive. So what you have is a degradation rate, gamma, which depends on your age. So this delay time and the age can be thought as two different equivalent ways of looking at the same problem. This degradation rate, gamma, is called in the literature, it has many names, this conditional failure rate, instantaneous degradation rate, probably other names. So of course, there is a, a relation between the two, the two viewpoints, between assuming that you have a F of tau, a time given from the beginning with some distribution or a, of a degradation rate that depends on tau, and they can be obtained very easily, simply by noting that the probability of dying, the gamma of tau is a probability of dying provided you're still alive at the, the particular time, that should be a tau. A tau. So you can obtain this relation between the, the two things, so between the gamma and the F. And this is the first of that. Okay, this is what you think. Uh, so um, let me stress again, you said there are two different points of view. Particle is born with a random death time date built in, or probably of dying depends on age. Okay, this, uh, the, uh, this is the relation between the two, the two viewpoints. This F of tau equals to gamma of tau. Of course, in the viable distribution that I mentioned before, which is widely used in, in numeric because it's very easy to, to generate random numbers according to distribution. So the gamma of tau is a, is a power law, simple power law, usually take it with alpha greater than one. Of course, let me make sure the gamma is a constant Markov process. So this rate does not depend on your current state. Then F is an exponential distribution, as we as we know. Uh, once you know this this thing, you realize that this is this is what this appears everywhere, right? So let me give you some, this this example in which these processes have have been used. Is that the the creation of proteins out of out of out of out of a gene? Okay, so this is a bit um, hundreds of thousands of papers of this. So you have a, a gene that through transcription through a messenger RNA creates a protein, then the protein does something and then the protein disappears, okay? And you can also simplify this by uh, 
lumping together this transcription and, and translation. So you have a, a gene that extrudes a protein, and the protein acts and decays, and this is not about this process. So out of a gene, it's born a protein, and then the protein decays after a while, after a time tap. Okay, uh, this is a stochastic process with a small number of particles, so the fluctuation will be very, very important, and the delays are also very important in this, in this process. Okay, so the, this, this time the protein is, is alive is where it uh, is also very important for its function. And also the, the fact that the proteins, there is some heterogeneity in the, the, the times the, that the different proteins are alive. Uh, one of the consequences of that is that you can look at the, at the, at the time, the, at the time evolution, this is nothing but a, a, an exponential interval between, between different events. You can see that there are bursts, so different events occur on bursts, which is nothing out of an exponential distribution. Okay. So, well, again, again, once you know that, I will go through that. You can say that, for instance, when you have interactions, so these interactions do not happen at a, at a constant rate. For instance, when you have a, this interaction between between human communication, you can communicate via Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Of course, you are not uh, sending tweets at a constant rate. People tend to sleep as well. So there are some activity, daily activity patterns and so on. And then you respond to Twitter. So this is not really nothing. In which this Markovian assumption, the rate that you, at which you do something is constant, is certainly not, not, not relevant or not correct. And there is another case. I think that, I think that was Twitter data, this particular case. And you can see that these periodicities correspond to daily, weekly uh, periodicities. And there are more physical cases in which you have avalanche dynamics also occur with some intervent time, which does not follow an exponential distribution. You see, this is a lot of plot, some more close to power laws. Okay, so let me now go to the summary, to this introduction. So I will, what I will talk about is that I will review some other results on stochastic systems with delay. So I will first do a, a very short summary of a birth of death processes, what to expect of a birth of death process. Then we'll talk about delay in the creation, delay in the degradation, so that would be two separate topics. The water and noisy water models. I will talk about the nonlinear version that you know so well, and then aging in the model, and which are the consequences of, of this aging, and how consensus is modified, uh, the reaching of consensus is modified by the presence of this aging, which I which I will leave. This is the normal community. Okay, so let me, this short summary for those of, of you who do not know, um, just to stress what I want to, to stress about the birth of the processes. <clears throat> so it's simple, simple, okay? No, no delay, Markovian processes. So something is more at a rate C and disappears at the rate D. And we look for the number of particles X. And then, well, this is the degradation rate. Uh, Typically, the degradation rate is independent of other particles, not always, but the degradation rate, the rate at which you recover from an illness is independent of, of the presence of other people with the illness. So this is simply proportional to the number of, of X. Uh, then the creation rate is the, typically depends on the, on the system volume, but of course it can also depend on the number of particles. This is called a feedback. So if, if, the, if this uh, an increasing function is called a positive feedback, the more particles you have, the, the larger the rate of, of creation. And a negative feedback is the more particles you have, the smaller the, the creation rate. Uh, it's a stochastic system. We look for the probability of having n particles at time, time t. And this obeys a master equation, OK? Um, if you have seen it before, you know what I'm talking about. If you did not just let you know that this is a probability, an equation for the evolution of the probability of observing n particles at time t, and depends on the creation rate. and um, and the degradation rate, and this is a, a convenient way using these step operators, a convenient way of writing that, the master equation, a very compact way of writing that. Uh, which are the main results of this? Well, in the case that C, the, the creation and the, and the degradation rate are constant, what we have is that the steady state is a Poisson distribution. Okay, that's a, like a, one of the main results in this field. Uh, and in the, in the, how do you know when a distribution is a Poisson? So the typical trademark of the Poisson is that the mean value equals the, the, the variance. Okay, this is a typical trademark of a Poisson distribution. The mean value equals the variance. Um, also a typical trademark is that the correlation function is an exponential. So you can define the correlation function in the steady state. You know, this useful way definition of the correlation function. And this decrease, decreases exponential. Okay, that's another trademark of, the, of these Markovian processes. So this, uh, when we have independent particles, so C is a constant and gamma is a constant, 
we have a Poisson distribution and the correlation decay exponential. Okay. Uh, of course, if the creation is not a constant, if you have feedback, you do not need to have a Poisson distribution. And the usual rule is that when you have a negative feedback, the fructose are sub Poissonian. And you have a positive feedback, the fructose are super Poissonian. And this is really important when you have uh, analyzing experimental, ex experimental data. You want to know whether you are, have a positive or negative feedback. You can look at your fluctuations. And the sign of those fluctuations, or the relative importance of those fluctuations, will tell you whether you have a positive or negative feedback in your process. OK, now let me go to now to the delay creation. OK, so what happens when the creation happens with some delay? OK, so we have this process, birth with delay. So something is initiated at some time, as I'm, sorry, with some rate C, which might be feedback, but then it takes a time tau to complete. So it's initiated. So the protein, is the, 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 um, the gene starts to express the protein, but the protein takes some time to be expressed after that. OK, uh, and this is, as I told you before, we can think of this as as a, as a distribution of delay time that, that, are, that are given from the very beginning. And well, you need to look for the property of having n particles your master equation. And this, again, this is not so simple. Okay. As, as I said, we'll skip most of the technical details. You can look at this paper if you're interested in the details. Uh, but as I said, will, I, will I will skip most of the details because I mean, they are rather complicated, actually. Okay. okay, you can see this equation, which you can see this typical memory effects, okay? What happens at one time t depends on what happens at other times, okay? You have this no Markovian effect in the sense that you have a coupling between the one time distribution and the two time distribution, okay? And then you need to, to work with that. Of course, it's good to know when there is no delay, I mean, with this f of tau is a delta of tau, so something happens exactly at tau goes to zero, then you recover your usual master equation. So this, uh, I will check at least that this is, or could be correct. Um, also, let me give you the results. So what happens? Which are the main results of including delay in the These are numerical results and numerical analytical results, okay? These are the, the lines and analytical results and the, and the um, symbols are results from numerical simulations. And I'm using this negative feedback, okay? This is a function that decreases with it. The larger n, the smaller the, the, smaller the, the creation rate. And then what do we see? We use also fixed delay. So uh, this is a delta of tau minus some, some value, okay? So something appears at time tau exactly after the process was initiated. So you can see that the fluctuations increase with the delay. Remember, this is, this is a negative feedback. So if tau goes to zero, if there is no delay, the fluctuations are smaller than the mean value. So they're sub-Poissonian fluctuations. But if you increase the delay, fluctuations increase. And when you cross this critical point, the fructose will become super Poisson. So this is a system in which there is no, there is negative feedback, but it's still fluctuations can be super Poissonian due to the fixed delay. So when you look at experimental data and you conclude that because your fluctuations are super Poissonian, uh, that, that you have a positive feedback because your fluctuations are super Poissonian, but you think again, it might be that the fact that the fluctuations are super Poissonian is due to the fact that you have some delay in this creation process. If you have a positive feedback, the fluctuations are always super Poissonian, but the fluctuations decrease as the delay is increased. So I summarize that in this, in this, in this diagram. So you have a, this is tau, the delay time, which I assume to be a constant in this particular uh, analysis, and then we have this positive feedback, a negative feedback, and zero feedback. With zero feedback, you have Poisson distribution. For positive feedback, you have the super Poisson, and for negative, you have sub Poisson. But you can go from sub Poisson to super Poisson by increasing the correlation time. Okay? So for negative feedback, this is the main result of this study, an increase of the delay increases fluctuations, turning them from sub Poissonian to super Poisson. For fixed delay, an increase, you go vertically on this line. So you go vertically for fixed delay, an increase of the negative feedback leads to a decrease of the fluctuation. Okay, this is the summary of the of this of this chapter. Uh, as I said, for positive feedback, the system is always super Poissonian, fluctuations decrease. So the role of the of the delay is opposite opposite 
for positive and negative fact. In one case, in one case increases the fluctuations, in other case decreases the fluctuations. With respect to the Poissonian case, in which the fluctuations, the variance is equal to the, to the new value. Uh, this is, I know, I, I find this nice, okay? <laughs> so I find, we also compute the correlation function in the same case, okay? So we compute the correlation function. And um, you can see that uh, we have the, 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 the solid lines analytical result. We could not believe that. It's so weird <laughs> that we did the simulation. It's, it's, so it's fine. It's okay. So it's a weird correlation function, but it, it, is, it is what it is, okay? So it has some periodicities. Okay, this is tau goes to 10. So it has some periodicities, okay? Basically, multiples of the, of the delay, okay? So this, this correlation function is not exponential, but it's also some periodicities. Well, Sorry, but high. can you identify somehow this like t, for example, equal 10 or something? Because I, I, I see that it analytically exists completely with simulations, but 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 yeah. some intuition, what, what is this? Uh, ah, because tau is equal 10. Ah, yes, tau is equal to 10. Yeah, 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 sure, sure. Yeah. Okay, percent. and then 20, yeah, 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 I understand, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me go now to the second part of this first talk, I think. It's the delay, the relation the delay. Okay, so it's the same process, but then we uh, we uh, we admit two things. Okay, that the, the, the particle can decay instantaneously with this rate gamma, and then decay with some delay. So you have a process which initiated with rate d. It takes some time tau to complete. Okay, we have to admit those two. And well, this is the summary. Okay, so we have this creation rate. It could be feedback, so it doesn't need to be a constant in the treatment. Uh, you have instantaneous degradation, but then you have also delayed degradation at the constant rate, but takes, a, in that case, a particular fixed time to complete. Uh, this time, tau is getting from a probability distribution. I discussed that part of the beginning. Uh, this, actually, this particular model has been used as a model for protein production as a, about six years ago already, by about 16 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that was used to do a single model protein production. And then I assume they have this <coughs> delay degradation is up to due to the action of prote proteases in the cell that degrade the proteins. Or you can also have instantaneous degradation, for instance, simply proteins live in the cell. When a protein leaves the cell, that's an instantaneous disappearance of the of the of the of the protein. I'm sorry. And the, the, then there is this naive analysis that you can do, okay. okay oh, I can do that very easily. So let me write down a mean field equation for this process. And this, okay, I have creation, so the X is the density of X particles. So I have creation, so positive. Then I have, you know, this degradation, which is minus gamma proportional to X. And then they have this degradation, which depends on how many particles there were there at time tau ago. So you write down this beautiful equation, and this is a delay equation, linear delay equation. And you know, this delay equation can show oscillations in some time. This is a typical role of delay. There are many instabilities induced by delay in which there are oscillations in the, in the dynamic system. But this simple argument is wrong in that particular case. And this showed who, how careful you have to be when you use intuition to, to derive results in this with delay. So the process is more difficult to analyze. And again, I, I address you to this uh, reference that we did in, about 10 years ago with, with Luis Fernando La Fuerta. And we analyze this process, and this process turns out that you need to split this, this X particle into two types. When, once it's created, it's called an active particle. Active particles can decay, but then active particle can go to this inactive state, which will eventually decay to, to the zero. And this is a technical, technical point here, is that this last reaction, the, the, the degradation with delay is what is called a consuming reaction. I think that was coined by Barrio, I believe, for the first time, and then Miekish also used that, that concept. In the fact that this reaction modifies the number of variables when it begins, when it begins, the number of Na increases by one, number of I's increases by one, and when it ends, when it ends, the number of I's decreases by one. So we have this double effect of the of the of the delay. You need to take that into account. It's not easy, as I say, but when you get this the right, the right equations. And let me show you what happens. System for constant rate, okay? So it's a simple example of no feedback, simply when there is constant rates. And you can show that both NI and N, NA and NI follow independent Poisson distribution. Remember the total number is NA plus NI. So the total number also is a Poisson distribution. And the average value satisfies delay equations. Delay equations, which are 
close for the number of active particles. And this delay equation, you can see the delay for the number of inactive particles. In the case of a fixed delay, so all particles die at a particular time tau zero after they're born, you can simplify that to those equations, but you cannot never write a close equation for the total number of particles. So there's no way you can write down this, and this is not possible. And then when you analyze those equations there, you can see that oscillations are not present in this system. So this naive uh, argument was wrong in this, in this particular case. Okay, uh, this is something we think that last week, we, we coming back to this problem. So now we're using, a, this is a feedback case. Now there's a feedback case, I'm using the SIS model. And you can see this, is a, well, we still don't know what to do with this. This is the evolution of the number of affected people with delay, with delay in the degradation. So with delay in the recovery, okay? So uh, we can see those oscillations which appear because of the feedback, okay? There is some there is some dependence on the rates on, on n, but we analyze that. I, I just wanted to show this that some solution might appear if the if this creation rate is not is not a constant, as we have shown, is not possible in the case of constant creation rate. But this one that we're still analyzing that. Okay, now let me go to the second the second part, which is aging the bottom model. And I, I know you, you are familiar with the bottom model, so let me review very briefly what the bottom model is. It's a perfect imitation dynamics, a model for perfect imitation. What people do simply is to, is, is, is usually it's in terms of people, okay? People interact and people copy the opinion of other people, okay? So it's an imitation. You do, it's a teenager behavior. You do whatever your neighbor is doing. So you have two options for a, for a particular topic. Then you select randomly one of your, uh, agents or your people and this one selects another one and then simply copies that one okay so that was red as copy the blue opinion of a randomly chosen um you can write that you can write this in terms of rates so the rate of going from the state plus to the state minus is proportional to have the density of minus and the rate of going from minus to plus to the density of plus okay we call sigma the fraction of neighbors in, in state plus one and then we have a simple question here this is an imitation process. So, of course, there are two observing states. Everybody in the blue state, everybody in the red state, everybody in the plus, everybody in the minus. So, in both cases, they all have the same opinion. We call that consensus. So, is consensus reached by this simple process? Which is the role of the network of interactions in here? So, this is a very simple question. Um, in order to do that, we need to measure consensus. So, measure consensus. There are two, two standard measures: is is the magnetization, which is the the Rate to the fraction of people in the plus states. So when m equals to minus one, when you are in the in the minus one consensus, with m equals to plus one, you are in the plus one consensus. But you can also use the density of acting links, which are the link which connect nodes in different states. You define this measure. And the question is: Do the rules of the process lead to consensus? Rho equals to zero, or m equals to plus minus one? And then the answer is yes, of course, sure. I mean, this is a ergodic. You visit eventually all the all the configurations, and eventually you will reach the consensus in which the in which the, the everybody has the same state. Nothing can happen after that. So problem solved. Okay, good. Well, maybe not. <laughs> maybe the problem is not so simple. And it's not so simple because this is indeed the case when you do study this model in in special dimensions one or two. You do find that the that the the row there was the density of acting link that decays to zero. It did decays to zero with, with time. So you will reach an, an, an event with some uh, decay rate, a power low or lowering or whatever, you will reach that this goes to zero. But this is not the case when you go to higher dimensions or you consider most complex networks. Or for instance, the all to all, which is the infinite connectivity. And here, what you find is that this the system gets trapped into a disordered metastable state in which rho settles into a, a plateau. Of course, eventually, after a long time, you will reach the consensus state. But there's a long time here, here, which is a log scale. There's a long time in which you will have a well-defined, a well-defined, let me stress this, a well-defined value for rho, which is not zero. Of course, eventually you will reach zero. You all have to reach zero. Okay, that's a logic stuff. But then you can also analyze how which is the dependence of the time to reach the, 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 the behavior of rho. And you can see for the major greater than two, it settles to a this metastable value. And you can see the time to reach that, uh, how it is here with the system size. So the, the 
conclusion is that in the thermodynamic limit, for n going to, you take first the limit going to infinity, for dimension greater than two, the system does not order. That means that when you think, when you increase your connectivity, I mean, increasing the dimension means you increase your connectivity, hampers consensus. So the more connected you are, the more difficult it is to reach consensus. Okay, something to think about. Okay, that's what models are for. So you have a, a mechanism and you see, by increasing my connectivity, it will be more difficult that we all reach consensus. Okay, maybe it's counterintuitive, maybe not. That's, that's the result of the model. Now, uh, it's something interesting. This is a perfect imitation. What happens when the imitation is not perfect? So there is some probability of changing a state not due to interaction with other, not due to this copying process, but due to other, which is called noise. Okay. Uh, there are many ways of reaching this model. I reached this model through a paper by Kirman. Okay, so that's how we reach the people. That's, that's, I explain it this way because that's the, how I reach this model, which is called the noisy bottom model. Okay, it's the bottom model with noise, with noise or the Kirman model or other names. So Kirman, who is uh, an economist, was studying the role of brokers. Okay, and they say brokers, have different brokers here. You can see they were a type with the brokers and they brokers can be to different stage. And he, Alan, compared the brokers to ants which can follow the path to food with two different trajectories. Okay, so there are two options for the ants. There are two options for the brokers. The brokers can be selling or buying um, um, whatever they buy, stocks, right? So, so they can be in this buying mood, this is state one, or in the selling mood. And they can switch between the two states by two things. One is imitation. Simply follow the crowd. This is the same as before. I simply, this is the density of, of agents in the other state, okay? Simply the, the age. And, but also they have a chance of changing the state just because, randomly, independent of the others, okay? This is Kirman model. From there, Kirman created for the prices and so on. I will not discuss that at all, okay? I will just discuss this model, which is called, had been actually derived many ways before. So it is the noisy water model, which yeah, this is so simple, which the chances are that it has been obtained in different contexts. So it, uh, and also would like to mention a recent paper of my just that's advertising, which we use this model in a very, in a very different context. Also. Okay, so which are the results of this? Well, the results of this are depending on the noise and the herding, let me call that A is the noise, and H is the copy mechanism. Depending on this value, you can have a transition between a state in which you have consensus, not perfect, in the sense that you have consensus. So sometime you are in one state, then you jump to the other, not perfect consensus, or a state in which you simply have no consensus at all. Simply the number of people in the in the in one of the states fluctuates around one half. So this is the disorder state. This is order state. Order disorder. And you can move between order and disorder with a transition, which is called a finite size, because the critical point of the point from moving to one to another depends on system size. So for system size equals to infinity, the critical value is zero, and you are always in the disordered state. Okay, so any small amount of noise will lead you to a disordered state. Okay. Any small amount of noise will be used to the system. This is a result for a fully connected network, all to all connectivity. Uh, I will skip this comment because, uh, and then, of course, this is something you don't want of the model, okay? You want the model, you want the model to have a phase transition, you want the model to show transition from consensus to, to non consensus. Do we want to do that? How can you do that? So I will tell you two ways of doing that, which is using nonlinear rates and using aging. And, okay, first let me show you that. This is a result for the all to all, but if you include a, a detailed network, the result is about the same. Okay, in most networks, what simply what you have is that your critical value rest rescale with an effective value of the which is depends on n. So in, mo, in most, the result that the critical value goes to zero is is valid for also for for many many networks. Okay, now the question of nonlinear rate that we all know well. In the linear rate, what you do is to change the rate of imitation to some power alpha, okay? Okay, but that was alpha equals to one was the previous model. Now, how do you interpret that? Well, alpha greater than one, you could look at the rate, alpha greater than one, the rate is less than linear. So there is some aversion to rate to change. You 
have a less preference for change than you have in the linear case, if alpha is greater than one. On the, other case, on the other hand, if alpha is less than one, you have a preference to change. So this model, alpha equals to one is neutral. So you simply copy, but then you have alpha greater than one, you have some aversion to change. If alpha is an integer number, two, three, four, this is called the Q voter model. This Q voter model is equivalent to choosing in order to change the state, it's not enough to copy one neighbor. You need to copy Q neighbors. So you look for two, three, four of your neighbors. If they all agree in the other state that you change, you need to reinforce your, your need for change. Okay. Well, there seems to be some, uh, some practical application of this model, like in models of language extinction. It seems to be some evidence that alpha is greater than one. Okay. But still some debate whether this, this is. Uh, reasonable fit or not. Uh, what happens when you include this, this alpha greater than one is that the transition becomes a true transition. So the critical value now is independent of n. So the critical value is it goes with alpha in this way. Okay. And you have this nice phase diagram and you have this disordered state and you have all the state by model. You have a second order transition, then you have even First order transition. It's a very rich phase diagram that you know that you know very well from the Q from the Q. Some of you know very well from the Q from the Q model. Now, uh, let me summarize then. What happens with those nonlinear rates? The nonlinearity induces a well-defined transition. So when the rate is equal to one, you have a consensus region which tends shrinks to zero with system size. However, when alpha is greater than one, you have this well-defined transition. So you have a consensus region which is larger. So again, remember, alpha greater than one means it is more difficult to change. So when it is more difficult to change, it is easier to reach consensus. Again, the same principle as before, same idea that, that percolates this voter model. The more difficult it is to change, consensus, to change opinion, the easier it is to reach a state in which there is a consensus. Of course, perfect consensus. Okay, so this alpha greater than one gives a bona fide phase transition to consensus. So again, this idea of some reluctance to change favors consensus. Uh, the conclusion again holds in complex networks. And so let me, go on, let me go now to another mechanism which introduces consensus in the, in the voter model, which is that of aging. Uh, how, how much longer do I have? Still maybe five, 10 minutes, I hope. <laughs> okay, yeah, be, yeah, we started uh, later, so <laughs> I didn't check time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. So it's my fault. Yeah, so I don't know, 10 more minutes. Is okay. it fine? Yeah. Tasha, we started at 20 past. 20 past. Okay. Yeah. But still, like 10 minutes will be. Okay, let me. So let me introduce now, coming back to the to the first part of the of the talk, I'm going to introduce what has been called inertia, aging, delay, it's all variants of different names of the same concept because it has appeared different idea. So as far as I know, the first to introduce this idea of inertia, aging in the bottom of the world is Stark, Tessoni and Schweitzer in the 2008. And they introduced this idea that the productive interaction depends on how long the aging has been in a particular state. This inertia, I mean, if you have been voting for Democrats for a long time, I mean, it's more difficult for you to change to Republicans. Okay, you are in the, the same state. You have been teaching the subject for so many years. It is more difficult for you to change the subject that you have to teach. So once you have a state long in one state, it is more difficult for you to change the state. This is the main idea that, that percolates that. Okay, again, these are non-Markovian. The rate of change depends on how long you have been in that particular state. And this idea that the probability of changes depends, decreases, actually in, the, in, the, in, this, in this version with the, your age, okay? So each agent has an intrinsic time tau that represents the time since the last change. You change and then your, your clock sets to zero. And then, like this there, the product of interact decreases with tau. And the one they found is that this mechanism favors consensus in the noiseless voter model. That's the result of this paper. And then, uh, let me summarize that, okay? Let me summarize that because, because there are many, many different questions. So let me stress, because there's, there's some kind of counterintuitive. If P is a constant, so the probability of, of interaction is a constant, one of 0.5 is simply 
changes your time scale. Consensus is not rich. I'm talking about the all to all um, coupling. The system gets trapped in our own limit at several states. However, if your probability decreases to a constant value, you reach consensus. That's a result of this paper. And then this decreases exponentially to, to the new value. Uh, so, sorry, the uh, row decreases to exponentially to zero. Okay, so this is the result of this paper. This is amazing because if P were one, you wouldn't reach consensus. If P were 0.4, you wouldn't reach consensus. But the fact you decrease from one to 0.4 makes you reach consensus, okay? Now, if you increase, we call that anti anti aging or rejuvenating, whatever, the probability of change increases with increases with, 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 with age, then consensus is not rich again. Okay, now, is, is, during this case, this probability went to a, to a finite value. If this probability decreases to zero, whether you reach consensus or not depends on the way it reaches to zero. If it goes faster than one over tau, you do not reach consensus. If it goes lower than one over tau, you reach consensus. And in this particular case, you go to consensus as a power law, which is the, the borderline. And this also solves some numerical results that were obtained by Juan Fernandez Gracia and Maxi here at the FISC. I'm um, sorry, I'm, I'm Victor, uh, some time ago. So, okay, they observe the, with this particular form, which is that was one over tau, that the decay to the consensus was as a power law. And our results explain all this, all this phenomenology. So, let's go to the, to the noisy water model. That was for the water model without noise. So, let's do the same for the noisy water model. So, we used the noisy water model, in which you can remember the rate of changes to plus is uh, a noise plus some herding mechanism. And then we include the probability in the herding. So the probability of imitation depends on how long you have been in that particular state. And we assume that to be decreasing with time. And what we observe is that this thing that again, means that it prevents, remember that in the, in the well, I, will, I will make the summary now. Okay, this introduction again induces a transition between consensus and lack of consensus. So let me summarize. What happens when there is no aging? Probability of copying is constant. So we have this in transition between, in between consensus and non-consensus, which was a width one over n. We could solve that, we could, we could solve that, we, we could make this transition to be well defined by no linear effects. But now we do this aging, mean that the probability of interaction depends on age, decreases with age. And we find exactly the same behavior we found in the non-linear behavior. Is that this transition from consensus to non-consensus, now it occurs at a well-defined value, which is, uh, which, which, which does not depend on system size. Okay, you have a, a well-defined transition in the, in the thermodynamic way. And this uh, ergo, uh, symmetry breaking transition because you go to one or the other state. So this is the same phenomenology we observe in the nonlinear model. Um, so the summary is that the aging, the relative to changes, favor consensus. This is the same as we had in the nonlinear version. So we find the same phenomenology between the nonlinear version, nonlinear Markovian version, and the aging non-Markovian version of the modern model. Is there a connection between these two results? Can we map one into the other? And the, the answer is yes. And I will give you just a hint of how we do it, very, very simple. And the idea is, um, I'm giving some details. Maybe I could skip the details of the mathematical treatment. So what we do is to is to, mm, to, in, to in, give a new variable, which is the number of people which hold the plus minus state. But now they you include the h tau into the description of this. So we include a new variable, okay? And when we include this new variable, you can find the rate in terms of the new variable. And you can write the rate equations for the evolution of these variables, okay? You can find those close, close. This, again, in the case of fault to all connectivity. Again, for the details, you will need to look at this paper uh, up there so a couple of years ago. And now in this, well, we do we do many things, but we do something which we call a thematic elimination. We assume that the behavior of this little, of these um, variables are a slave to the evolution of the macroscopic variable, the total number of agents in the plus or the minus, the minus state. And then we can close this and find an equation, close equation, for the total number of agents in a state plus, which is that equation. And this equation has the same form as the original voter model. 
you can increase or decrease your rate by one using this home effective Markovian rate. So the normal community has disappeared through this um, mathematical treat of this adiabatic elimination. So we obtain this effective Markovian, which will have some effective rates to increase or decrease. So these are the effective rates that allow you to. So you can analyze that using your standard Markovian techniques. So you can write the master equation with some effective rates. You can find the stationary distribution that we write in the term, the form of potential. And you can write the average values of the moments, which are here. Uh, then you can compare with numerical simulations. <laughs> and of course, if the results were not good, I would not be giving this talk. <laughs> but the results are good enough, so I can show you the, <laughs> the results of, the, of this theory and the results of the numerical simulation. That whatever you see a line is a numerical simulation, that would you see dots are the result of whatever you see a line is a theory, and when you see you, whatever you see the dots, these are the result of numerical simulation. You can see the, the magnetization, even the um, what well, this is the finite size scheme uh, effect, this is the fourth cumulant. These are the fluctuations, and so, so this is a good agreement between them. Uh, you can also plot how do this effective rate look like, and you can put those effective rates and in terms of the noise intensity and in terms of this parameter B that appears in the in the in the noise in the probability of interaction, and you can see that <coughs> for a small B, this is highly nonlinear. For V large, you see when V is very large, then that, that tends to a constant. So for V going to infinity, this goes to a constant. This is the linear rate that you found in the in the standard in the standard water model. And you can compare that with the with the rate which were nonlinear. So you can see there is some equivalence between these nonlinear rates, which is the, those effective rates that appear in the aging version of the model and the nonlinear rates. Okay, so I'm also done. You can also compare that. When this we can also do up the phase diagram, the function of this parameter B. When B goes to when when uh, you can see that this this thing disappears in the in the limit of um, of, of the of the water model. Okay, so these are the conclusions. I think I run out of time. These are the conclusions that I leave you there. So that will be in the, in the in the web for you to to read in detail, and of course also the the. The reference in which you can find the details of all the calculations. I'd like to thank you for your time. Thank you very much. And uh, my first question be, before I start to comment or ask questions, can you send us this presentation also? Oh, sure. sure. Yeah, thank you. Because yeah, we will have this video, but but uh, but there are so many important informations for us here that so thank you very much for this talk because we really <coughs> learn a lot and uh, maybe you have questions. Some other people have questions. <coughs> so think about your questions, and before you ask, I have to ask, uh, because I I noticed that on the one of the previous, I have many questions, in fact, but but let me first clarify one thing. On one of the previous slides, I noticed that you wrote like alpha uh, larger than one, which is uh, yeah, it it was almost the end of the presentation, so. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. Just, just. Uh, it was already about the aging. So maybe go to the last slide of your talk, and then we will. Maybe I will start. 